today on Family Maker Camp. Uh, today we have Patrick Benfield and Ken Hawthorne from iLab for Design and Making at the Magellan International School in Austin, Texas. And today they're going to be doing a project with light logo and our Arduino board and a NeoPixel um, light up ring, which you can see here in our video. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to you, Patrick, to introduce yourself, um, the, the lab and, and the project. Right on, thank you so much for having us. And it's great to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, if you have any questions at all as we're doing this, um, put something in the chat and we'll hopefully get to that as soon as we can. Um, I'm working with Ken. We are the two um, maker types here at the Magellan International School. Um, we just started working together this last school year and did a lot of cool things. And then boom, we had the uh, COVID-19 um, and that kind of put a damper on things, but we are um, getting back up to speed. You might see some of the makerspace behind me. Um, it's a K to eight makerspace and uh, we are getting things back online and uh, trying to navigate with um, our school's administration what making is gonna look like in this kind of context. Um, for today, we're gonna be working with Light Logo, um, which is really awesome um, coding environment that uses um, text. And then we're also gonna be working with um, hardware and uh, with the Arduino and um, NeoPixels. So it's a really, exciting way and especially um, if this is maybe your first project or if it's you know your millionth project there's a lot of things um, to get out of. Uh, I fell in love with this um, whole idea of light logo and this this particular exercise that we're going to do today um, from this book. I'm gonna put this up. It's by a fantastic uh, maker and author named Josh Berger. Uh, this is his second book and this, uh, a lot of what we're gonna do today is based on that work and it just spoke to me uh, as a tinkerer of things. It was such a um, easy way to get started programming and tinkering with both the programming side um, for some computational tinkering and then the actual kinesthetic style tinkering um, with wires and the Arduino. And I think Ken, if you wanna, if you wanna pop in real quick, I'm gonna back out. Um, I wanna say one thing is, with our work, even though this is a K to eight maker lab, um, between the two of us, we work really with K 16 and then in with teachers and, and other adults too. And this is such a powerful um, piece of programming and has so many, has so much potential to not only um, be a fun activity for yourself and just the pure coding aspect, but it has uh, just tremendous possibilities to go further and um, kind of complexify it and do more tinkering. Um, one of the main pieces I love, and here's something I'm just gonna hold up. Here's another one going. Here's an Arduino I mounted to some uh, wooden blocks um, based on some of the ideas from the tinkering studio at the Exploratorium. And, you know, Ken and I both really, um, one of our missions is to demystify and unblack box, so to speak, um, the technology around us. and making uh, people more comfortable with seeing a, a bare naked circuit board and messing with it um, as low as kindergarten uh, on up through various, you know, could just be simple circuits, but then on up through like uh, makey makey, um, micro bit, Arduino, uh, Raspberry Pi, that kind of stuff. So this is one, this uh, light logo and this um, style that we're doing is really just a broad spectrum of things that we try to um, work with students uh, of all ages and adults. And from a personal context, um, I loved it, but I was, um, I have a son that is going into sixth grade and he has, um, he's dyslexic. Um, there's a bit of dysgraphia. So, so it's hard for him when he's doing like math, like imagine trying to do long, multiple, uh, long division and the numbers are swirling. It's very hard for him to do that. And um, he saw me working with light logo and took to it and it, he was fearless. He spent, um, when he first saw it, I don't know, something like four or five hours of just tinkering and making and coding, um, which is huge for him. And um, so that really um, kind of just reaffirmed the, the, the powerful nature of, um, you know, going back to Seymour Papert, um, of the powerful nature of computing. And I'm gonna step away and uh, let Ken say some stuff because he's got a lot of good insights too. 
Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Um, hey, I'm Ken. Uh, we are socially distancing here in the lab. Uh, so we're not wearing masks, but we're staying our six feet apart. Um, yeah, I work with Patrick. I've been a mechatronics teacher for six years now, an engineer, uh, 16 years before that. And my passion is uh, close to the line with Patrick and what we're doing here at the Magellan School, which is um, taking something like the Arduino uh, naked circuit board and knocking the fear of the naked circuit board out of uh, very young students. So we're not here for the 95%, I'm sorry, we are not here for the 5% of students that will become engineers that are comfortable with this. We're here for the 95% of students and teachers that might look at a naked circuit board and be intimidated. And our goal is to get them simply not to be afraid of it. So we're gonna be working with the Arduino uh, today. It's an incredible um, five to $20 microcontroller, very, very durable. And um, yeah, this is the platform that we've used with uh, very, very young students, even with text-based programming. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at some NeoPixels and NeoPixels come in all sorts of different flavors. Here's a ring, which is what we're gonna be doing today. But what's kind of cool is they come in different formats. Here's a 16 foot long rope. Here is a flexible board. Here is a rigid ring of 96 pixels. They're really bright. They're very inexpensive. They're made by a company called Adafruit. And once we get our first pixels to light up and start to understand the code and the interface, you know, game on. Then we can build very, very big, interesting displays. So uh, with that, I'm gonna move over to the remote cam and uh, kind of be Patrick's hands as he's talking. I will uh, show you how to wire this up and he's gonna show you how to code it up. So. All right. And we do also have our masks here for when we can't maintain our social distancing because we are responsible makers. Um, so yeah, um, we're gonna get started with the hardware section first. Um, I've done this many times and I've tried the software installation first and then going and adding the NeoPixels later. And I like, it, it makes more sense later on starting with getting the NeoPixels set up. Um, so I'm gonna unplug, a little demo piece right here. So what we're gonna do is, um, this is a 3D printed ring that I found to house it. Um, that's another great thing about NeoPixels and this whole project is it lends itself to other things. So um, we have access to a 3D printer. This is something that my son and I designed together to be like a giant diffuser, which looks pretty groovy when it's dark. Um, we've done in here with our um, younger makers, a little light box based a bit on um, some of the stuff from Reggio Emilia and stuff from the Tinkering Studio. And this NeoPixel, and when you're programming it, having a uh, fantastic light and shadow play with computing and hardware is awesome. Uh, so let's get that started. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure to have um, your NeoPixel ring if you have one. Uh, we're using the 24 NeoPixel ring. Um, I could be wrong about this, but I think you can do up to 120 or 160 um, NeoPixels. There's been a couple updates since um, I first installed Light Logo, so you might double check that. But 24 is not your only option. And like Ken said, it doesn't have to be in the ring shape. Um, so I'm going to put it over to the maker cam real quick so we could see a little bit more about this. All right, so you should be able to see um, the Light Logo has a, um, a procedure going from when we were testing stuff out. There's um, Ken's fingers, and there it is in all its brilliant glory. So, the, so this brightness right here, this is uh, 20 out of 255. So this is uh, about 10% of the brightness that it can go to, which is pretty amazing when you're working with diffusers and wanting to shine three different objects. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if we put a diffuser on it, this is at 10% power with the diffuser, right? And we could go 10 times more, but it would just show white on the camera. So these NeoPixels are really uh, an incredible value for what they are. I mean, you have, this is a pretty sophisticated piece of hardware for not a lot of money. And there's a lot of learning that can go on with this. Oh, we had a question um, from Greg in uh, 
the UK. Hello, Greg. Um, he asks, which one of us is shake and bake? We'll let I'm you bake. decide. Bake, bake, bake. <laughs> okay, Ken says he's bake and I'm shake, but sometimes that it goes back and forth, you know. We're flexible like that. All right, so in order to get started with um, the programming, let's get the NeoPixel all wired up. Uh, do you want to talk about that, Ken? Yeah. So um, when you first start with electronics, when you first pick up an Arduino, um, your, your very first program you're going to do is called Blink. And you put an LED with two legs into a positive and a negative, essentially. And you're just running it like a light bulb, on and off. So what you're doing is a little pointer here. Your very first program is probably going to be putting it into pin 13 and ground, but you're basically just lighting a light bulb. And the real step forward when you feel like that you're really starting to overcome your fear of the naked circuit board is when you go from two connections to going from three connections. So here you can see we have power, we have our ground, but then we have something here called input, and that's a signal. And I can't overemphasize how more empowered you feel when you start to work with three wires, because then you can do distance sensors. You can do a lot of different inputs and outputs when you're comfortable with the idea that you have a device plugged in, you have power and ground, and then today we're gonna to take that next step and send a signal to the device, or if it's something like a sensor, we'd be reading an input. And so this third wire, when you go from a two wire world to a three wire world is really, really empowering. And so here, what we're doing is these connections are meant to be soldered. They're very small little holes here. And where it says PWR, power, five volts, GND for ground and input, we found that these are meant to be soldered and we just toss it out the window. We're working with kindergartners, you know, um, we're working with all students of all abilities. And what we found out was- And teachers. <laughs> and teachers of all abilities too. Uh, we found out that the perfect wire, the perfect technique is this 22 gauge- Hookup wire. Hookup wire. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure when you're getting that, it's solid. A solid core wire is stiff, it is inflexible. Um, and the reason this is perfect is because when you go to stick a wire into the Arduino, you can stick it in there straight away without any other cables. So if I say this is 22 gauge wire, and I look down here, I can see I have a 22 hole there. And with the wire stripper, you can take it and pull it, and you have a little piece of bare wire. Most of the time, most of the books have you using something called a jumper wire, and we found that that is superfluous. Superfluous? How do you say Superfluous. That? Superfluous? Okay, but this is stiff enough that you can just stick it directly into the Arduino. So if you have a roll which costs, what, 50 cents for hookup wire? you have the ability to have a whole classroom of students wiring the Arduinos. If you're buying the Arduinos that are the clones, they're $5 each, you're getting a lot of people involved for not a lot of money. And what we're doing here is discovering that you don't need to solder. You can have a not great connection mm -hmm. that'll work almost as well. Once in a while, and this is also good for the idea of rapid um, prototyping and iterations yeah. on your idea. So, you know, why get bogged down with the soldering when you're not ready for it, or if it's not even necessary, and you can just quick, quick and dirty, yes. um, get stuff set up. And that's especially good in the classroom, but also just for yourself at home. Yes. How quick and how dirty can you get? I mean, you <laughs> want to move quickly. So don't assume that you need to solder. Don't assume these are absolutely beautiful. I'm going to disconnect the power now. These things, are absolutely beautiful. These are called mini grabbers. They're made by Pomona, like $5 each. And man, they make your job easy. But it's an extra connection. What we wanna focus on here, what Patrick was working with is just, we can disconnect everything. We're doing that now. I'll disconnect 
the wire. And then Patrick, if you can tell me this isn't focused because I'm only looking at it on yeah. the phone. Can you tell me, can you kind of see that label on that hole? Is that well defined? It's upside down, but yeah, you can you can kind okay. of see it. Okay. You can see the text. So here you have a piece of stripped solid core wire. Okay. You have data input, data output. We'll get to that lady because uh, later because data output means you can actually chain a lot of these together. So if you have 24, the data can come in here, go through the 24, and then go to the next ring, which is really cool. But here you take a piece of solid core wire, stick it into the hole. Make sure that there's a little bit of metal showing there. I'm gonna take it with my big clumsy hands. I'm gonna wrap it around one time. And all I'm looking for is for it to make contact. Okay, is that focused, Patrick? It's good. Okay, so look, this is a solid connection. Unless you're really banging around in a vehicle off road, this is gonna work almost as well as soldering, it takes no time. The wire is not gonna be you know, cutting any fingers, you're not gonna get burnt. And so what we wanna do when we're doing any NeoPixel, we wanna find a signal wire. I'd make that yellow or purple, some other color. And then you have your GND for ground, usually make that you know, black or brown, something like that. And then traditionally, you know, five volts is gonna be red. And so here, what we're doing is we're taking this and we're gonna hook it up to, in this case, it's gonna be pin number two for, pin number two. And you just, you can see this, this has been pushed in what, 20, 30 times? It looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Stick it in. Get it done, right? Quick and dirty. There's two grounds down here. Patrick, can you see those grounds? Uh, no, that's okay. Fine. Can you just stick it in? Stick it in. You wanna make quick and dirty connections. And which one's that going into? And this is five volts. So you have, can you see that all right? You've got signal coming out of one of these in this case is going to be number two for the code we're using. We've got power and we've got ground. Three connections done with solid core wire, wire strippers, rough, quick, stick it in and move on. And if you want to get fancy later and you want to solder and have a better looking um, enclosure, there if we check on Thingiverse, there's a pretty nippy Neo pixel ring. I can move it up a little bit. Yeah, you can um, actually three D print, and it snaps down into place. And so there's a again this ability with this project to to go a lot of different directions. So you can start with programming and hardware, ended up in three D design and you know, fashion. And then the one thing that I just wanted to point out before we move on to the coding is Patrick made this. I'm I'm absolutely in love with this. This is. This is beautiful. What we did is we found out that it takes late, later kindergarten or early first grade to be able to, you know, wire with solico wire and sticking it into the little pins in the Arduino. Here, he's taken some aluminum Chicago nuts and he's taken great pains, in this case, three volts, that was for a micro bit, but here we have signal, power, ground, and then we have some alligator clips where he has soldered on a little washer. I didn't actually solder those, but it's a great idea that I just grabbed. Yeah. <laughs> so that, and then he's got the Arduino here. So if you're working with younger elementary students, this is wonderful. Patrick, did you push this up for the design somewhere on your social media? It's on my um, Twitter feed. I think it's pinned to the top. Okay. And this is all based, I can't take credit for um, the idea, but it's my kind of version of it. It's a kind of a mix of uh, some basic circuit blocks that had the same kind of form factor from a group called the uh, Children's um, Innovation Program. And then also with the Tinkering Studio. And so, um, you know, Kit and I are working on this idea with things like LEDs, um, resistors, um, and looking at 
again, our efforts to on black box, all these things. So kids yeah. can kind of see it at like a atomic kind of Lego style um, building blocks, see it and then do something that we're you know, not really yeah. expecting with it. Don't fear the naked circuit board. This is a scaffolding <clears throat> approach. And then in second or third grade, you take away the wood and you're wiring directly. <clears throat> Could you, um, would you hook up the rest of the um, connections? So when you plug in your Arduino, it'll, it'll work. Like with the ring, can you finish connecting the ring? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. So um, Ken is going to be. Second? No, can you connect, can you connect the, um, yeah. the one you're working on? Yeah. Um, Ken's going to finish uh, the, the basic connections with the other two. I think he's, which one is on there? I think he's got the data out. Um, so now he's, we've so got, oh, no, like, this, look. Is, this is in, right? So you're going to go in. Data oh, yeah, in, data in. Data and data in. And then he's got his power, power and ground. Power and ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook those up here. It'll be just a second off camera. We're getting ready, but I am going to hook up right now those connections. So I've got ground, got signal. And then what I'm realizing as I'm doing this, because we're setting up the camera here at the last moment, I am going to use my mini grabber just to extend to the Arduino so we can get both in the shot on the camera. Um, and then as Patrick is working with code, I'll see if I can actually get it so we don't even need those mini grabbers so we can get the whole thing in the camera, I'll show you what that looks like. Because basically what we do is get the LED um, NeoPixel ring set up and going. Yeah, we're good. Um, and then we can start to, if you're following along, you can, um, we'll start connecting it to the Arduino. Okay. Can we go ahead and stop that procedure real quick? So, um, yeah. When we, that one of the trickier things um, that honestly, when I, when I installed this for the first time, it was a little bit overwhelming because there's, there were so many steps, but if you follow the steps, um, you should in theory um, be okay. So I'm gonna, um, Go ahead and open up some stuff here. Then I'll, I'll share my screen here in a second. Um, there's a question from Greg. Um, Greg's asking, could you run the power from a separate device such as yes. a, um, yes, you can. Do you want to talk about that? So when you're running um, power from a separate device, um, again, you have, um, You've got your five volts and you've got your ground. I'm going to grab another power supply here. As long as the Arduino is connected to the same ground as the power supply, you would actually end up using, you know, maybe something, this is a monster power supply here. Um, and you've got multiple outputs. We can talk about this or if you email or whatever, Get a hold of us. Um, I'm happy to show you on the classroom last year, I actually had 3000 LEDs and it took a 100 watt power supply at five volts. So you can get bigger and bigger power supplies and then you end up powering the Arduino and that five volt pin on the Arduino actually becomes the input. So you actually put the input from the power supply into five volts. And then you put it into the NeoPixel ring. And if you're running larger rings, there's a capacitor. And Adafruit has a wonderful tutorial on this. If you just type in NeoPixel and Adafruit, you'll see where you'd want to put the capacitor and a small resistor. But I found these to be amazingly durable. With the Arduino R3, um, you're able to really beat it up. If it says run you know, four or five NeoPixels, I've run a lot. Uh, if it fails, it just resets. So, but yes, at some point you want to get a five volt power supply uh, capacitor and then make it larger. Awesome, thanks Ken. Um, so now we're gonna get started with um, the tri slightly tricky software end. Um, just a reminder, all the um, resources that we're using for this specifically, so the, um, the, uh, the wire, the, um, the board, the NeoPixels, that's on the event listing. So if you want to check that out, and also if you need to get hold of or like to just check in with me and Ken on social media, our Twitter handles are there. And um, I think our school information too. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is um, switch and I'm gonna share my screen. And I've already uh, downloaded the folder um, to my desktop. And if you don't have it, if you navigate towards um, the event listing, it'll take you to the direct download link um, to that zip file. So this has already been unzipped and it is ready to go. Um, so this is what I've got going is light logo dash looks like version 2H. So I'm gonna double click on this thing. Open up here, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so what we're looking at here is um, if you wanna see the changes that have been made over time, you can see. Um, on my, just as a note and another thanks to Josh Berker, um, I found this great font um, that is uh, helpful if you have dyslexia. So if you're wondering about um, the specific name of the font, you can hit me up in the chat and I can try to find it or just um, email me later, but it's been um, really helpful. So thanks again for that. You can see the changes. Um, highly recommend printing out. There's a great, um, let me just shift this around. The light logo reference is fantastic and I have one printed out in front of me. Um, this says it's by the Playful Invention Company is what put out um, light logo in the first place. They're great. Um, it, it has a list of the different commands, some of the color stuff, and some of the workflow and logic. Um, really cool stuff there. So I'm going to keep that handy. Um, the main thing we're going to be starting with is this installation text. Um, so I'm going to get that open, and we're going to start doing that. Um, all right, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because we're going to be accessing these different folders and different pieces of software on this side. So I'm gonna do like a little split screen kind of vibe because we're gonna do lots of back and forth. And while I'm doing this, um, Ken's gonna be following along. And let me just check in with him to make sure that we're good to go for some of the installation stuff. Um, all right, looks like he is plugging in his Arduino to his computer. All right, installing the light logo. So hopefully um, you can already communicate with your computer and the Arduino. Um, doing workshops, um, like I, I'm a mentor for the You Teach Maker program, and we did this with a, a bunch of our student makers. And um, if you're doing this as a workshop, um, this could take a while just because there's so many different um, you know, hardware, software setups that, that people have. Um, so hopefully, if you're following along, um, you have all this ready to go. So I'm gonna skip some of these things. I mean, with the assumption that you've got Arduino working already. Um, if not, um, Ken and his book, Super Arduino, um, has some cool stuff in there. Uh, and he has come up with a great um, procedure for installing and getting it to work across Mac, Chromebooks, um, PC, um, Windows. And that link is, I think, I think it should be there as a PDF, but if not, we can get that to you um, later on. So after you plug in the Arduino, you're going to double click on this assembler jar. So that's just um, kind of like a um, condensed file that'll have to be unpacked. So I'm going to go over here and look for the, um, it's in the light logo VM folder. So there's my light logo VM folder. And I'm going to look for the assembler jar right there. Now, one of the things um, I didn't have run into this before, but Ken, um, Ken did. Was it, uh, I think, extracting that jar required um, a separate program? What was that called, Ken? Oracle? It was from Oracle where, yeah, I, I, I guess some Macs have that and some Macs don't. So be prepared to. Yeah, there might be a few roadblocks along the way. I mean, and from my experience with doing this stuff, there's always something that you don't expect. Um, so I'm going to double click on the assembler jar. Hopefully, I can find it. Is that it? There it is. So it says, welcome to Logo. And you've got this, uh, this is very similar to the um, screen that we're gonna be seeing later on. Uh, so it's opened up, hopefully it works for you. And you're gonna click on the ASM button. So I'm gonna do that, it's here. One click will do. And you get a, a reply really quick. Um, you get a certain amount of words reported back to you. And then when you click download, that's gonna go to your Arduino. Um, what I love about this project is that you're using the Arduino microcontroller, but you are, you're having the opportunity to um, 
program it with something completely different than the normal Arduino IDE. Um, just a, a quick heads up about this environment is it's as uh, Seymour Papert describes in Mindstorms, it is something of a micro world. Um, so it is a, a sandbox with um, a very sparse set of rules and it's an interesting way for students to be able to kind of find out how it works by tinkering and, and exploring. Um, so having an environment that matches how they learn in real life um, in this kind of digital domain. So pretty nifty stuff. So I'm going to keep on, so it's downloaded. Hopefully you'll see some um, flashing yellow lights on your Arduino um, as it's downloading the information. And then you're gonna just close the assembler jar. And then actually on the Arduino, there is a reset button. Go ahead and press your reset button. And then you're gonna go double click on the light logo jar and the light logo folder. So not the VM folder, but the one, um, the actual light logo itself. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna look for the light logo jar. There it is, double click. It's taking a second. There it is. So for so, myself, uh, privacy and security settings come up and get in your way. So what I'm doing on my screen is it's saying un unidentified developer, <laughs> open anyway, password, open. Yeah. It's Mac and in, you know, any computer, they're very safe and they want to make sure you're really sure that you want to download this thing. So um, yeah, I, I forgot how to do that the first time too. Both of these had to be um, allowed. So I'm going to click on the download button. And that's it. Welcome to Light Lego. The device not found because um, I am not um, connected to my Arduino, but I can do that real quick. Um, you should say something. So I'm gonna click that, close the Light Logo jar. This is interesting, so then you need to Take your plug that's in the uh, Arduino, disconnect it, and then reconnect it. Now, since our um, everything should work if you have your inputs correct and you're able to download seamlessly, you should at some point have a, a single white LED representing um, a turtle uh, showing up on this. And um, let me show you something really quick. If you've never seen or heard of turtle art or logo, um, this is um, a, a more sparse and pared down version of logo that Seymour Papert and his MIT folks um, developed. And um, from that came a program called Turtle Art, which was, um, you know, Papert and logo, they had a virtual turtle and they had a floor turtle, like a robot that was moved around um, by commands. Um, you can read about that in um, Mindstorms. And a later version of that is turtle art that is just um, moving the turtle around to create really groovy geometric images. So let me just show you an example um, real quick on another camera while Ken's getting stuff set up. Um, well, I'll do that in a second. Let me, what's going on, Ken, for a, uh... oh no, video. I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. And I think I'm just gonna hold this up in front of me. So here is an example of turtle art of just a, um, you have a couple of procedures and the turtle would on the screen move around. And you've got some more complex versions and like that. In this case, it's taking that idea and going away from this kind of block coding style and using actual text to move around a turtle um, represented as one LED block, one NeoPixel, um, and moving that around the screen. So when we get to it, um, it it's, it's interesting to think of it as a cool approach of thinking about when you're making the procedure is imagining the turtle um, virtually going around the ring or up and down the strips and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go back to our maker cam real quick. All right. 
Ken, do you want to put that over there? What's that? Want to, can we put that on the screen? Because I went over here and just talk about what you're doing real quick. Uh, yeah. What's working and what's not working? Yeah. So right now I'm just, um, I am going through and I'm in Assembler now. And I just clicked on ASM and then I clicked on download. And I am just, I wanted to show the audience wiring up the Arduino uh, just hardwired without those little mini grabbers. Trying to drag the computer close enough so I can set this down. You tell me when you can see that. Can you see that? Scooch it up. There you go. Okay. So what we have here was really, really cool. Is you can see that we've just got a springy little. We've got a springy little NeoPixel ring, and we're not even using those little mini grabbers. We're just taking a 22 gauge solid core wire, which is really stiff and dirt cheap, stripping off the ends and just jamming them into the pins and unceremoniously knotting them around. So this is the kind of connection that we want to teach students as quick as possible. You know, we have students in was it? Yeah, first grade last year, we got them to start to use both the wire cutter and the stripper. There are easier to use wires as far as kinesthetically. Um, one's, one's called silicone wire, but um, we found the solid core wire for making connections is, is really, really strong. And now let's check. I think Ken was following along. So I've done the assembler. Now I'm in light logo. Uh, the assembler said it. What was the exact message? It, yeah, written in one second, so it had a whole bunch of numbers and letters after that. Now I'm in Light Logo and it says, Welcome to Light Logo. So, what's the next step after that, Patrick? Okay, so let me go back to screen sharing real quick. And I think I should mention the default pin in this is pin number two. And because we're working with the Arduino, it actually starts with pin zero, one, two. So it's actually the third pin up is what we're going to stick that yellow signal wire. We have power, we have ground, we have signal. And again, wrapped very, wrapped very roughly and imprecisely. And that's okay. <laughs> um, it, it's amazing how imprecise you need to be with this stuff. So yeah, right now I have the assembler. I've just flashed that, it says written in one second. And I have a new light logo up. And tell me the next step. All right, so I'm gonna put my logo up so I can people can see the typing piece. Okay. I have the same thing. Now I might get error messages, um, but Ken's is the one that's actually gonna be showing up as a um, maker okay. cam. So once we get going, I'll flip back and forth between the screen yes. and the maker cam. Absolutely. All right, so one of the things that we're looking for is um, there are a couple of ways to get started. The, when I was working with the workshop with college students, when you're with teachers um, and even with, with my son, it's kind of fun just to get started and doing stuff. So if you have the uh, light logo reference sheet, it is fantastic. And um, in a second, we'll look at some of the sample um, projects that it has on there and make, we'll load those up. And then we'll also open it as a text. And that's mainly how if you have a more um, kind of complicated procedure with sub procedures um, that's the, you'll need to be working with the text file. But for a lot of the early explorations, um, we've got this console right here. And as soon as you um, type something and it, it gets transmitted to the Arduino, you'll have pixels lighting up and it's such a delight. It's, it's addictive and there's some really cool things you can do with it. Um, what is our hello world? What's the first thing you want to say? I think the first thing I want to do is let's, Hopefully this works because like I'm I'm typing it, but it's gonna you know it's gonna be on a different computer across from me. So I like just doing something simple. Failure is an option. It's oh yeah, failure is always an option. I'm gonna scroll down, and this is was what I showed my son I was like, hey, try to turn them all red or all green. As well as like, well, how'd you do that? So I say, we'll just type in all red, is and you press one, space. One word or two. Uh, two words. All. R E D. Okay, all red, mm -hmm. and then enter. Mm -hmm. And so let me switch to the maker cam real quick, and nothing's happening. 
Did I try one pixel? Did you try reset? Have you, have you, did you reset that and do all the things? Let's try that. Let's see, Let's we're gonna the reset, reset the button. thing. Yeah, so, why don't you just swap? Well, let's 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 okay. uh, work on we're, this. We're gonna problem solve. Yeah, let's 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 be real, man. Okay, so what we have is I've got my light logo up. Hold it on. says "Welcome to Light Logo." Um, it looks like it wants to run a program because we're not getting an error. It doesn't say "device not found." So what does that point to? That points to wiring or putting something in the wrong hole. So I think, yeah, I've got number two. Number two, so this is a signal. In fact, you're verifying that I should be in number two, is that yeah, right? Two. Okay, number two. And then I've got, let's see, five volts. And that's plugged into, oh, that's interesting here. Maybe it wasn't plugged in. That's interesting. Look at that. Okay. And yeah, you know, this is part of maker life is lots of problem solving and trying to narrow down the problem. So, so, gonna, so the reset, can you talk a little bit about why you need to do reset on this? Which is, you know, when you're working with the Arduino IDE, you normally don't. Mm -hmm. You need to be pressed and reset all the time. Not all the time, but here, do you have nothing showing? So let me show. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm switching over to Ken's computer, and I'm going to go through um, the procedure again, and you're going to just see you'll see Ken working with it and working with the wires while I'm doing that. Um, let me check the chat real quick and see if there's anything we need to take care of. Looks. Good, I think. So I'm going to disconnect the Arduino. I am. So there's the bare board. And what I'm doing is I'm checking our connections here. One, two, three. I see the ground looks a little janky. So I'm going to try to tighten that up a little bit because we weren't getting the error message on the screen. There wasn't an error message that says device not found. It was not there. So we've got a good signal, reasonable connection on the ground. Okay. So what I'm doing here is taking a positive wire. Looking for where it says power five volts. I'm also plugging in the USB so Patrick can get it recognized. And I'll work on the ring. So again, ground signal. Patrick, when I was uh, doing this, just you want sure. So Patrick's running through the checklist. Like you said, failure is always an option. And I found this is this is this is worth doing. It being, oh, yeah, it's being, it's being real with it is not keeping it real. Okay, so I've gone down through the steps, and we're on step twelve again. Um, as soon as this gets rewired and plugged back in, 
we should hopefully be back in business. We'll see. So what I'm doing is, since we plugged in that wire quite a few times, I just cut it, re-stripped it, and I'm looking for five volts. So five volts. Same thing. Just wrapping it around to try to make a semi-tight connection. It's amazing. The ends of these wires, we probably plugged in 30 times to this Arduino before it got too janky. So you can see that's getting a little bit rough. But that's fine. And this is something we want kids to feel and you know adults to feel free to mess around with this stuff. So and really whether you're a seasoned maker or still developing, you know, the maker mindset, this is exactly the thing that is kind of and, you know, it really exemplifies a lot of the the, un, the inglorious part of, of, of making. It's not the full project when you're done. It's all this stuff right here that is really, I think, um, what is the most impactful. It's awesome when it works the first time, um, but how often does that happen? Yeah, especially, I mean, if, if you are looking at working with your kids or you're working with being a teacher, if you wait until everything works perfectly every time, then you're not going to be sharing this with anybody. If you find something cool and uh, learn about it just enough to get it to work, go ahead and share it with you. You know, feel feel free to fail in front of your class. All right. So Patrick's running through. He's on number twelve. Double click. All right, we we're in business. So, I mean, that was the best kind of failure. That was a real failure, right? And so it's just a matter of backing up, following the instructions, and seeing where we are. So right now, we've got it wired up with our non-soldered solid core wire stuffed into the holes, just the way it would be in a classroom in, uh, you know, lower, middle, elementary, all the way up to... You know, people are just starting to sign. Okay, Patrick, I just moved to the computer. Can you see on the camera view? Yeah, it's, there? it's pretty good. Did you want me to smash that down a little bit or? No, I think it's cool. And I, that's another reason why I like this, um, this kind of um, hookup wire is because it is rigid and you could, you could twist it around and keep it up. There's a lot of, yes, um, yeah. isn't that fun? Boing. All right, so I'm gonna go back I'm to, to So okay. Pat, Patrick typed all red. So I'm going to screen share real quick and talk about the turtle and all the things. Oops. So many things. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, when it's after step 12 and you plug it back in for the first time, you should get one um, white LED uh, NeoPixel. That represents the turtle. Um, um, one of the cool things you can do, I'm going to, so I typed in all red and I forgot to hide that first turtle. Um, so that white, um, that, that you saw earlier was the turtle and then it did all red and everything else, um, turned red. So what I'm going to do is another thing you can do is press is type clean C L E A N and press enter. And I will go back to make your cam real quick. And can you, here, I'll scoop this up. Yep. I can get this next to the print. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So there I did clean, and I still have that the turtle showing. So I think if you do, um, if you I look, that's an excellent idea, hide turtle. Um, looking back at the um, light logo reference, what I love about it is the commands are, um, very minimalist and that works great for me and it works great for i think um students in general and just makers because um it's not super verbose um it's very poetic almost you can do so much with just a few lines of code um i even took some of these commands and made a haiku um with just the commands and made a made a poet a poem with code so really cool stuff if you want to hide the turtle um ht should um ht H -T, enter ht enter Point. Turn out the turtle. So if you want to, how do you think you would show the turtle? <gasps> S T. 
ST. So if you type in ST. ST, enter. Boop. There we go. How would I move the turtle? So um, how do you think you move the turtle? Forward. Ah, why not? Backward. Um, up or down? Two dimensions. Two dimensions, exactly. Two dimensions. Um, and what I, what's great is coming from the block style of, of um, turtle art, mm -hmm. same concept is you're moving the, the turtle forward as a direction. So this is still moving around. So you, you just abbreviate FD. FD. You know what a forward what? Forward well, let's just what happens if you don't do anything. You can press enter. Not enough inputs. Ah, okay. So what do you think you should do? Let's do forward. How many FD. steps should we make the turtle go? Well, you said we have 24 on the ring. Let's do 12. Wow, that moved. And you can see it. Um, there, this is a time where I think it's just really fun to play. So I think um, Ken's got the sheet. He's going to go through. And we're not going to screen share this because I think it's also good to show. Uh, I'll just kind of go back and forth so we can see what's happening. Okay. Um, and maybe, Ken, if you would tell me what you're typing, then I could at least. Let's do, let's do all green. OK. All green. Enter. And Ooh. there it is. That's interesting. It's all green except for where the turtle is. So this idea. Uh, the turtle's going to move around. So I wonder when it's all green, if I went back and I did forward this time, let's do six, so I'm 25% of the way through. I'm going to diffuse it and see if that makes it a little less sparkly and see if that shows up a little bit. Okay. It's a little better. Okay. So FD6, enter. So that's interesting. So right now the turtle is trailing red. Well, we put, um, there's a stamp function. So in turtle art, when the turtle moves, it is leaving a color behind it, and that's how it makes the shapes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what it's doing now. Okay. Um, and there, so there are ways to turn that off. So I'm going to go to um, my coding. Um, I just had a request from uh, Facebook from Rachel. Hello. Um, please post a font name. I will try to find that in time. I'd have to look at an email real quick. Well, so what I'm going to do is go back to screen sharing and say, oh, oh what'd you do, Ken? Oh, uh -huh. oh. oh. P-U. P-U. Look at that. So I'm moving it. P-U. Pin up. So pin up. Pin up and pin down are um, two of my favorite things you can do. So right now I'm screen sharing. And so imagine you're holding a pen. And if the pen da is down and you move your hand, it's gonna leave a mark. Same thing with the, the virtual turtle. If you want to move the turtle without leaving pen marks behind, you would pin up mm -hmm. and then move the turtle. So that just looks like PU is pin up, mm -hmm. pin down is pin down. So if I do pin down once, nothing happens except when I go forward again. So you're doing, tell me what you're typing and then I'll type it. Well, I, I did PD once, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. enter, which nothing happened, but- Because what, it, yeah, it needs yeah. to move for, yeah. to, to see something. Yeah. But now FD5, there it is. It moved five and we can see the turtle. So we've got some sort of symmetry there. So pin up, pin down. Could you, um, I'm typing HT. Mm -hmm. We can do that real quick. HT. And then I'm gonna do clean. clean. And so right now our um, NeoPixel ring is completely um, un unlit. And so one thing I'm gonna try here and I'm gonna upload it so we can see what's going on with, with the stuff. I'll let um, those at home play around with the different things you can do. Um, that's really one of the funnest things for me and my son and just when you're just getting started is just playing with it and breaking it and seeing how you could get stuck and how to get unstuck. Um, before our time is up, I do want to show you some cool stuff that you can do um, with some example projects and how to do more complicated um, programming. So in our folders that we downloaded, there's a series of samples. What about shaky? Um, 
Yeah, so I'm gonna go down and if you notice, um, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna open it so we can look at it. And then I'll show you um, how to demonstrate um, that on the NeoPixels themselves. So we're gonna look at shaky.text. Yep. I see something in first word global, is that right? Yes. Okay. And to startup, reset ht, set px, zero, go in. And so how this works is, um, you have your main procedure right here. Um, you've got some global values that this is doing. That's if you get into some of the nuts and bolts, um, you'll see this stuff. But in general, um, when you upload a sketch, let's say to this, um, it's going to run it immediately upon startup. So the master procedure that's controlling everything is normally called to startup. And that in logo language, that if you say to and then whatever follows, you're defining what it means to do that and you're giving the computer the actual instructions. Um, so we can look at some of the sub procedures down here. Like we have a loop, looks like we're gonna have some um, random values and moving some steps. Um, we're looking at setting the X position, um, some pixel values here, some wait times. So like we have flow, we, have, we can set specific colors, brightness levels. How do we load this? Moving. All right, so to move this thing, I'm going to go back to our Java screen, our, our um, console. Mode. And down here, there's three dots. If you click it, you want to navigate to where you have your samples. Got it. And so there are my samples. There they are. We said shaky. Uh -huh. So we looked at shaky. You'll get a little preview of shaky in there. Um, and then you open it. And so you can see shaky text is there, but it's not ready yet. You have to download it. Um, it's going to give us an error message, maybe. Nope, it doesn't. Um, no. Ken has done the same thing on his. And well, I'm going to, um, so once it's downloaded, you might not see anything. You'll need to hit um, reset. The reset button is not on the screen. Reset button is on, on the Arduino. And then, so I'm going to stop sharing again. And let's check out the maker cam. There we go. All right, so if you can you can see it moving back and forth. And so that is an example of the um, shaky um, procedure. And one of the cool things you can do is then if you make a copy of shaky in those folders, um, what I love to do is to figure out how it's working is to take that text file, make a copy of it in case you mess it up and change some of the values around and see, um, see what you can do with it and see, um, you can customize it. You can see, um, you know, if you make a change in one part of the system, how does it affect the whole system? You could add to it. You can, you can subtract, um, to it and, um, really then start to get a sense of the kind of the flow and the feel of working with light level. Okay. Cool. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. This was a lot of fun. I think uh, this is an amazing uh, program, Light Logo, and you can type and send commands faster than you can with your Arduino IDE just by hitting enter. Um, if everybody walks away knowing that you should take kind of stiff wires and just, yeah, it's a little bit janky, but just start sticking stuff together. Don't worry about making things perfect. Worry about making them quickly so you can iterate. Yeah, that's all. This has been fun. I hope we can do something like this again. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you um, for having us at uh, Make Magazine. It's uh, hopefully you got some ideas to start um, uh, doing this on your own yeah. and taking this home. And let me um, unpin this. Anything else you want to talk about? Or are we signing off? I think so. All right. Okay. Bye. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ken and Patrick. Um, and please join us again on Maker Camp. I love the problem solving and when in doubt, you know, we try again and, and we, keep, uh, we keep making. So we have programming every day of the week at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, please show us what you made, hashtag make together. Maker Camp is brought to you by Make Community. So please check us out at make.co. And thank you again, um, Patrick and Ken. That was great. Awesome. Thank you so much.